Hello and welcome back to Harmonix Tuning. We've been getting a lot of requests from our viewers to make some videos on the Hyundai and the Kia turbocharged GDI engines and in today's episode that is exactly what we are going to be doing. So behind me is an i20 N-Line with the 1 litre turbocharged GDI engine that has come for a basic stage 2 package. This particular car runs a manual transmission and as always we have strapped the car onto the dyno to get some baseline numbers. So let's see how that goes and then we will be able to put all our hardware parts and the tune and remeasure the car and see what it makes post all the mods. Now that we have the required baseline dyno numbers and the data logs on the car, the car is back on the lift. So the next step is going to be to remove the stock downpipe out of the car and install this decad downpipe. The exhaust system on the i20 N lines that were released after late 2024 basically comprises of three major portions. So what I'm holding in my hand is the catalytic converter and this is going to get replaced by a decad downpipe. The exhaust also has a mid pipe which houses the OPF or the GPF that you see over here. So what we are going to do is we are going to take off this center section and basically weld a straight pipe and put that back on the car. And for this particular build we are going to leave the stock cat back as is. We have removed the ECU out of the car and the next step is to basically get the read of the stock file of the ECU. So we are going to do that using our CMD tool and how we will be doing is by the bench read process. So we are going to be connecting these cables onto the pins of the ECU in order to get the stock file out of the ECU. We have finished all the work on the exhaust front so the downpipe is fitted, so is the midpipe. We are retaining the stock cat back and all that is pending right now is to fit this filter on the car. We have already finished flashing revision 1 of our stage 2 tune. So now we will put the car on the dyno and go through a few revisions until we are happy with the map. So we are at about 1500 rpm now. We are going to do a pull in 4th gear all the way to red line. Let's look at the horsepower curves now. The black line represents a stock I-20's horsepower curve, whereas the red line represents our stage 2 map. The car made a whooping 153 horsepower with an OE replacement filter, a downpipe and a midpipe swap. That's a gain of 33 horsepower on a 1 litre engine with some basic bolt-on mods. This engine made even more significant gains all the way from 2500 rpm to red line with a huge gain in the mid-range of up to 38 horsepower. Now let's take a look at the torque curves. Once again, we see gains similar to the horsepower curve where the engine made massive gains all the way up to redline. A gain of 80 Nm as low as 2300 RPM will make this car really peppy to drive even in a city like Bangalore. Now onto the big question of how does Hyundai or Kia's 1 litre turbo GDI engine stack up against the renowned Volkswagen or Skoda's 1 litre TSI engines. Here we have overlaid both the i20's horsepower curve against the Polo's horsepower curve. And at first glance, you can almost say that both the curves are nearly identical. Just that the Polo's 1 litre TSI engine makes a tad more power because the ambient temperatures during the Polo's runs were around 5 degrees Celsius cooler than when we dynoed the i20 N line. Moving on to the torque curves, once again we see very similar traits from the stock engines. This makes us wonder if the Koreans went ahead and designed their 1 litre turbo GDI engines based on the data they might have collected of the 1 litre TSI engines. Now let's take a look at what both these engines can do when they run similar mods and on the same fuel. The red curve is the i20's horsepower curve and that made a peak output of 153 horsepower whereas the Polo's 1 litre TSI engine made 146 horsepower. Both these curves are from a stage 2 build with XP95 fuel in the tank. So even when tuned, these two engines seem to be pretty much mimicking each other. While the i20's intercooler does help it gain a little more mid-range, the power on the i20 does drop off rapidly post 5500 rpm. We believe an aftermarket front mount intercooler on the i20s can make it gain even more power, but that is something we will have to see. Currently, there are no aftermarket intercooler options available for the i20 sold in India. The Polo, however, runs a charge cooler and those are pretty inefficient as well. There are a few companies making an air-to-air -air conversion for the Polos, however we haven't been able to accumulate enough data on these to see if they actually work as intended. 
even the torque curves between both the 1 liter engines seem nearly identical with the i20's curve having a slight upper hand. We understand that there is a huge debate going on in the Indian automotive community as to which engine is the better one. But truth be told, going by the dyno charts and all the data we have collected, it would be impossible for us to pick one engine over the other. They are that similar, especially when both the cars have a manual transmission. Now, if you were to compare the gearboxes between both the cars, especially the automatics, that would tell a whole new story. The torque converters on the Volkswagen cars are jerky and lackluster and the DCTs on the Hyundai's are no better. Given that we are used to the Volkswagen DSCs including the DQ200, we thought that the Hyundai's DCTs would be similar to a DQ200 in performance, however they leave a lot to be desired. The shifts are extremely slow for a DCT and you feel kind of a rubber band effect which is a huge no-no for a DCT. Unfortunately, not all Hyundai DCTs are tunable at the moment to make them better and that is something we are keen to work on. So if you are in the market to buy a brand new car and want to stay away from all the used car options available in the market today, then look no further than the Hyundai n -Line. Five years ago, if you had told us that Hyundai would come up with a turbocharged petrol engine that would match in terms of horsepower and torque to the Volkswagen group of TSI engines, we would just laugh. But today, Hyundai seemed to have managed the impossible. I've been driving the car for the last couple of days and it seems a lot more peppier than the Polo manual transmissions as well. So from all the Q&A sessions and the polls we've been conducting on our Instagram page, what we've come to understand is a vast majority of the Indian population seems to like the design philosophy of the i20 over the rather outdated Polos. Not just that, the interiors of the i20 N-Line are far better than the Polo's outdated interiors as well. And who would have thought that Hyundai would create a beautiful suspension setup that would glide over the potholes and bad roads, but equally handle well when you chuck the car into corners as well. This is one of our favorite hatchback suspensions that we have seen in the last four or five years. And kudos to Hyundai for bringing out such a nice setup. We would have really loved to see how the latest Polo, the AW version would have fared against the Hyundai i20 N-Lines. However, sadly, Volkswagen has decided not to bring these cars into India. So, like we said earlier, if you are in the market for an enthusiast car, then the only option currently you have on the market is the Hyundai i20 N-Line. We hope you guys enjoyed our coverage on the 1.0-litre turbo GDI engines. And if you think this is where the video is going to end, then you guys are in for a small surprise. We are also going to be discussing the mod potential of yet another turbo GDI engine that might just give the Volkswagen 1.5 TSI engines a run for their money. A new day, a new platform. Standing right next to me is a Hyundai Creta N-Line with the 1.5 turbo GDI engine along with the DCT gearbox. So the car has come for our stage 1 package and we are also going to be installing an upgraded intercooler on this car. So as usual, we have the car on the dyno. Let's get some baseline numbers in completely bone stock form and see how that goes. So we've removed the front bumper of the car and we've also uninstalled the stock intercooler. So this stock intercooler is going to be replaced by this aftermarket intercooler, which was originally designed for the 1R 1.5 turbo GDI engines. However, when we compared the part numbers of the stock intercooler between the Creta and the uh, Varna, it turns out that the part numbers actually match. So now let's install this intercooler back into the car and see how it performs. And while the boys are at it, I'm also going to flash our stage one map onto the ECU and then load the car back onto the dyno once the intercooler is installed. We finished installing the intercooler and loaded the car back onto the dyno. With the stock ECU tune, the car gained about 8 horsepower and about 20 Nm of torque, which is not bad at all. So earlier with the stock intercooler, when we had dynoed the car, the difference between the IATs and the ambient temperatures ranged anywhere between 20 to 24 degrees. However, post installation of this aftermarket intercooler, the delta between the ambient temperatures and the IATs is hovering around 8 to 10 degrees. Now we are going to flash our stage 1 tune onto the ECU and then load the car back onto the dyno and see what numbers it makes with our tune as well. Now let's move on to what you guys have been waiting to see all this while. The red curve is a stage 1 95 round tune with the intercooler installed and the black curve is the stock map. The car made a phenomenal 39 horsepower peak gain and max gains of up to 51 horsepower in the mid range. Honestly, these are some incredible gains for this engine. We wound up after 3 revisions for this tune 
Although we could have pushed a little more and made another 10 to 15 horsepower, we wanted to ensure that the car is out there on the streets putting on some miles before we push it even further. There have been lots of reports of turbo failures on 1.4 turbo GDI engines when tuned, so we decided to play it a bit safe for the moment. Add a downpipe and this engine should touch the elusive 210 horsepower mark and that is saying something about how far the Hyundai and the Kia turbo GDI engines have come in such a short span of time. Moving on to the torque graphs, we made a peak gain of 87 Newton meters and max gains of up to 100 Nm in the mid-range. Although at the end of the day, it's the DCTs on these cars that make what is otherwise a phenomenal engine a bit boring to drive unless you're in complete manual mode. Just a side note, these dyno numbers are uncorrected, which means no SAE correction factor has been applied. If we were to apply SAE correction factor on these charts, then the same numbers would be 214 horsepower and 388 Nm of torque on a stage 1 tune. Going forward, we have decided to showcase only uncorrected numbers for all turbocharged engines where the stock uncorrected numbers match or are close to the manufacturer's claims. Five years ago, if someone had told us that Hyundai would be making turbocharged petrol engines that would go head to head against the Volkswagen TSI engines, none of us would have believed it. Yet here we are in 2025, data logging these cars and dyno testing them for days. And what we seem to see from all the data is just unfathomable. The dyno charts for the power and the horsepower curves look so similar to the Volkswagen TSI engines, it almost feels like Hyundai must have just copied their design of the engines. One issue that we see with the Hyundai's is basically how lackluster the performance of the DCTs is. Once you've driven a Volkswagen DSC, you truly understand how brilliant a gearbox that is. So when Hyundai launched the DCT gearboxes, we were hoping that it would be similar in performance. However, the DCTs and the Hyundai's just don't seem to live up to the expectations. One another key factor is the DCTs on the Hyundai's are not tunable at the moment as the TCUs are locked. So we are eagerly waiting for that day when the gearboxes on these cars can be flashed to and we are able to flash a custom maps to improve the performance of these Hyundai DCTs. We hope that day is not too far off so that we can push these cars further and see what they're actually capable of. So this particular car with just a stage one tune made a gain of up to 40 horsepower and 90 Nm. Imagine what else we could eke out from this particular engine if the TCU was a lot more tunable. In the mid range, we gained up to 51 horsepower and 100 Nm torque and the dyno charts will just show you guys how capable these engines are. Last but not the least, the interiors of these Hyundai cars are such a nice place to be in. The steering looks really nice. Uh, it has a really nice feel to it as well. And look at the dashboard. The dashboard is so futuristic. It's probably one of the best interiors in the segment. The digital cluster looks really nice. And most importantly, the entire audio and the AC controls are physical buttons that you can actually touch and make them work. The suspension on the Creta inline is actually very well dialed in. On bad roads, it just glides over the potholes and the bumps. And as you start to gain speed and you try to swerve around a bit in traffic, it actually weighs up pretty well. And so does the steering wheel. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode on the Hyundai turbocharged GDI engines. This is Rahul on behalf of Harmonix Tuning, signing off.